Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it very much. Uh, this is actually where we are. We're, in a little, we're right outside San Antonio. We're a small independent liberal arts college. I'm going to tell you a little bit about us in a minute. But the initiative that, that came about this year is uh, in the Rio Grande Valley and as far out west as you can get in El Paso. We have a campus, so we've started, we started three satellite campuses. There's absolutely nothing new and stunning and exciting about that. A lot of people do it. A lot of people have done it. Uh, ours is a little bit different because it was specifically to serve a certain population. It was only through blended learning that we found out quickly that to, to achieve what we wanted to do, we had to do it. Catch as catch can. A lot of decisions sort of came this way. Oh my gosh, what about the students sitting out in, in Mission, Texas right now that they can't get? We have to, all this good stuff that I'm learning at this conference. Uh, I should have come here before we started this initiative. So thank you. <laughs> Next year will be smoother. Thanks to our colleagues from uh, from all parts in between. So that's uh, I'm, I'm an English teacher. Uh, I'm a dean of liberal arts and interdisciplinary studies. I came to the I came to the project kind of late. I knew that we were supporting the students that we wanted to help with, uh, with our curriculum and with courses that we were working on. But in January, I inherited it. <laughs> it was wait. We we spend lots of time. Trying, I have a colleague from. Uh, a colleague from the University of Pennsylvania. This is slightly off color, but I'm being taped anyway. So why not just jump in then? In the time that I had. But she came to visit and she said, man, that's a big ass state. <laughs> Look at she throw. Texas is a big state. And so when, when we're, we spend a lot of time, uh, we call it windshield therapy where I'm from. We spend a lot of time driving to these little campuses. And uh, it's been it's been a lot of uh, it's been a, it's been education. So I start this picture with me teaching my freshman composition. Among among the uh, other duties that were assigned, I got assigned it for. They said you teach William. You're an English teacher, right? A while ago I was. <laughs> you're going to teach freshman composition. So this is just a nice picture of some of our students that uh, uh, we ended up in a, uh, a turtle habitat teaching freshman composition. It's a long story. I just like this picture. This doesn't have much to do with presentation, except you see my wonderful students from down in the valley. You see our off-site coordinator. You see my turtles, so we'll just move on. That's all you need to know about that picture. We did, uh, we did, I know, did you see him? Okay, I know it takes a while to find it, but then you find it. Like what? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. So the way the model works is we have off-site coordinators. Again, nothing new and novel. Lots of people do that. But our coordinators uh, were all biology professors. We were trying to build a freshman first semester experience that would work best for us. And again, before my before my time, the conversation came out. I said, well, they're going to be biology. So, so Jerry is a biology professor who teaches uh, intro to biology. And so there was lots of field trips. You'll see lots of pictures of animals. We spent a lot of, and so we would co-teach. And he'd go, why don't you meet me? I'm going to go over this. You can do comma slices or whatever <laughs> fragment sentence and the tortoise i don't know that's uh that's uh that's the uh that's how we kind of team taught a lot of things let me tell you a little about our little university that we are just so proud of we just love this little campus so much oh my gosh so we've got a neat little history we're a little presbyterian school we're uh out of san antonio we're in the text the beautiful texas hill country y'all come visit sometime we'd love to have you i don't mean that lightly we'd love to have you it's a it's about the nicest little place in the world it's, it's just a delight. We started as a small military school back in the 20s. Uh, we became a junior college. We went on to university status rather recently. We're small, we're uh, Presbyterian affiliated. Um, there's our little mission statement. Again, everybody has one of those. And uh, what we do is we work with some students who may not, who may not do too well elsewhere. I mean that, I mean that in the nicest possible way. It's not open admissions. We are we are selected. We have they're great students, but they're students who may we may not maybe we weren't on their radar at first. It's a weird mix because they'll come to us and they'll go, I'll go, how did you end up here? So well, the University of Texas turned me down. So the University of Texas in a small private this, these are two vastly different experiences. How did you end up here? And usually I'll get to this in a minute because a lot of what this initiative was about was uh, I hate to, I tease with my colleague, Dr. Tao, all the time. I hate to be that mid-level administrator where it's always numbers, 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 retention, retention, graduation rates. But that's a lot of my world right now. And uh, quite frankly, we get a lot of students who come to us, who stay with us for a little while, and then they want to go off. Then they want to leave us and go elsewhere. So I'll talk retention rate in just a minute. 
and how this initiative and some blended learning played into uh, what we're trying to improve. Like every small, <laughs> I want to tell you, small private liberal arts colleges in Texas, we worry about things like numbers, numbers, bringing them in, keeping them, keeping them happy. And so uh, that was part of this initiative as well. So pretty little campus, just, just as nice as can be. Good colleagues, wonderful people to work with. We are also a Hispanic serving institution. Um, some of y'all know what that means, and, and you are as well. That means we're at least 25% Hispanic undergraduate students. We've had that distinction for a few years. So going down to the Rio Grande Valley and out west El Paso made a lot of sense. It was part of our ethos. It was sort of part of our mission. We've absolutely embraced it. We are, uh, no other way to say it, we're proud to, we're proud to be a Hispanic. We have a mariachi band. These kids are great. They perform. They, they, if you if you want to come, you'll see that they get to go present. They they compete against other mariachi bands in Texas. It's fantastic. I didn't know that was a thing, but uh, they're fantastic. They're really good. Um, so we've had a we've had a good time with that as well. Here's the here's the data that I live and breathe in all the time. Here's the here's the boring slide, Ray. This is, we call this. Don't take a picture of that. We don't need to see that. This is where I have to spend some time. Uh, this is our this is our last last uh, last year's cohort coming in. You can see our numbers. You can see where we retain. You can see uh, how we break down. I'll be happy to share any of that with you. But it doesn't have much to do with blended learning, other than the fact that we wanted our students at these offsite campuses to have a chance to be successful. So here's what we we knew we didn't want to do this. And hey, we should go into we should go into mission. Let's go to Brownsville. Open a campus in some strip mall. Take any you know bring them in. And if they're not going to have a chance to be successful, we're not doing them a service, and 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 they're certainly they're certainly not getting a, a good experience. So we hover right at about 71 percent. We are a little bit lower than that this year. You can see our our wonderful 10 year history. I'm always the troublemaker. You wouldn't know this lady me or, or meet me, but I'm always kind of the trouble. I'm always the emperor has no clothes guy in, in, in the big shop meetings, and I've always I've, I've said I angered some people a, a couple of months ago when I went. Well, I think what we should do is, well, what do we do? Oh, our retention, right? And that's not a terrible retention. That's, that's you know, we're okay. Yeah, yeah. We'd like it to be better. Many of your schools are, are better at that. I said, well, here's what I see. I can, I'm just an old English teacher who barely got a developmental algebra. But what I see is a, a pattern here that sort of, we haven't nudged that needle at all. We're not, we're not going anywhere. Why don't we throw out every single thing we do now and start all over? Let's just try something completely new. And so actually this initiative was, was kind of along those lines. And that's what we that's what we came up with. So here's our here's our concept. Here's the uh, the first year campus, and uh, how blended played a blended learning played a part of that. As I said, often in a moment of panic when we said, how do we get this content to our students? Um, we knew we wanted to be true to our mission. We knew that we wanted to help out students who, but the same exact students we heard about during that wonderful keynote speech. We knew that we wanted to uh, uh, sort of build a base. This is the part that always makes it, it, sound, it sounds a little mercenary. It's not nearly as mercenary as it sounds. If we have a retention rate where we lose a lot of students in our freshman and sophomore year, which we kind of do, right? They get there, they, they leave us for a variety of reasons. Usually they say, ah, it's too expensive. Or, oh, it just didn't work out. We weren't, we weren't, I want to go to, I want to, I want to go to a football game, Texas, right? I have to go to a football game, so I want to go to a big state school. So um, those of us who worked on this initiative, we thought, what can, what can we do to uh, maybe bring in that next class? And by providing our own little sort of minor to major league, to have our own little satellite campuses of freshmen who will come to us their sophomore year, and this is our first year, and, and I think we're being wildly successful, to be quite frankly, um, wouldn't it be a good thing to take this experience to the students? The model, the model works like this. Three little campuses, I'll show you our location in a minute. Uh, Three little campuses across the state of Texas, 25 students per campus, which in, in our world is a lot of students. That's that's big for us. 75 students coming in the sophomore year is pretty big. Um, the model that we wanted is we were looking for first generation, primarily Hispanic, primarily underserved population, Pell eligible folks who come in. We reduce our tuition drastically, uh, and we allow them to come to us after their first year with 30 hours of college credit, <laughs> this, this, has been a, this has been a little bit of a stress, but we, we almost delivered zero debt, zero loans. So we want them to get to us, yeah. We want them to get to us their sophomore year not carrying any undergraduate loans debt. Um, a signed degree plan, so they know what they're gonna study, they can see an exit in three years. A lot of students find their way in 
first year, second year, as you well know, they haven't, they haven't found a path. So we do a lot of services for them. Uh, we bring them to campus throughout the year, so we'll just absolutely bring them all up. They feel like they belong to us. They're part of us. We, it's it's not separate but equal. We are actually down there. We come back and forth. We feel like we're part of the team. They feel like they're part of the team. Um, and I'll tell you some more about that when we get to the uh, to the actual courses. Uh, <clears throat> It's a neat model. It's, a, it's, a, it's an intriguing model. The idea is we found a population. The main thing that was happening here is we'll talk a little bit about the summer melt. We found that our population was a group of students who were accepted. They showed interest in coming to Shrine University in Kerrville, Texas. They came from a variety of spots. We are primarily, most of our students come from the state of Texas, the big city. Uh, they have gone through the trouble of applying, right? They've actually said, ooh, I'd like to go there. They've been admitted, right? They've met our, they've met, they, they're, they're ours. Everything has come together. And we were experiencing primarily in Hispanic students from various locations. Thank you, sir. Uh, a summer melt. They just couldn't get there. Something would come. Something would come. Good. Something would. Somebody's got a good hot mic over there. Somebody would, somebody would say, you're in, here we go, we're excited. They get housing. I mean, for all practical purposes, we know that they're coming. And three weeks before the start of the semester, they just couldn't pull the trigger, they couldn't make it. And there was a variety of reasons for that. Some of the reasons included, um, gosh, they just didn't, they, it, it was tough. A lot of students, didn't, they just couldn't make that jump. There was some cultural issues. There was some family issues. There was some society. There was more putting, again, putting the money together. When they finally got the financial aid packet, when they finally been accepted, they're going to get there. It's going to happen. And then they just, we just kept, we kept losing them and losing them. So the idea was good. We're going we're gonna to come to y'all. How about we come to you? We'll set up in your towns and your communities. It's a very family friendly. We have events. You'll see some pictures of them where the families come. Um, the his, primarily Hispanic students are just delighted to have mom and dad with them. They come to events, they work, they're little stations. So what we did is uh, we opened our three our three little strip malls. I call them, that's not true, one of them's just, just one of them. One of them, there's, there's so neat the different places that we've been. So in El Paso, it literally is, you know those kind of, I think there's a, I think there's a chiropractic place on this, there's a, a half price place on there. it's literally in a mall, it's exactly what you'd expect. But it's really nice. They've done a really good job of uh, uh, letting the students come in. The way the model works um, is we have them come in to a lab. So here's the blended learning part. It's not the traditional, even though they were taking 15 hours, we didn't put them in, here's your 15 hours, your Monday, Wednesday, your Tuesday, Thursday slot. Your, we said, you guys come to us at 8 o'clock in the morning. Come into the lab. You saw our lab director. Sit down. Bring your books. Have some coffee. Enjoy, enjoy camaraderie. We'll, let, we'll cut you loose at 3.30 or 4 o'clock when it's time for you to go your job, because they're all working, they're all going back home, they're, going, they're living at home. Um, and during that time, we're gonna do things like beam in classes, we're gonna have live classes, face-to-face -face classes. We're gonna have, I'm gonna tell you guys about a uh, partnership we have with somebody called College Consortium. Some of you guys know them already. Um, so you can see just different, it's kind of neat. Standard little, let's stand a little strip mall. This in, in Mission Campus is a, uh, uh, Mission Texas got a, got a ton of money to open up an educational center, education and employment center in a uh, small little Texas town. And it's like walking, I was teaching about it, it's like walking into Google or Facebook. They have open spaces and they have design thinking and they put the student, there's just, it's that kind of feel. And then in Brownsville, we're in a, a plantation from 1890, this is a living, this, uh, uh, this is a living history, uh, uh, plantation that is uh, famous for birders. All the birders in the world come down here and look at birds. So right there in the uh, right there in Brownsville. So here's our blended learning. We did traditional face to face. Some of the area they're teaching classes. CNF. We do it three hours. It's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We did uh, a lot of hybrid classes. A lot of the stuff we were just hearing about. They take the classes. Uh, some someone online. Sometimes face to face. Sometimes a mix of all these things. We did straight online classes with varying levels of success. These are students who are, these are students who are maybe not too happy to be in an online class. They sort of still crave that sort of one to one on one. So that's where our that's where our coordinators come in. The coordinators on these campuses, while the students taking the online class at their own pace, there's our coordinators walking around helping them along the way. We did content sharing with a group called uh, College Consortium. Um, 
we did, my first, this is now it's in my class, English 1301. As I told my students, I said, welcome to, welcome to technology 1995. Let's go to the chat room. My students hated the chat room. They didn't see the, and I understand why. We used Genzabar, it wasn't great, it was clunky. We got away from that pretty quick. My students saw English 1301, here, here I am teaching, here I am teaching essay number, looks like we're working on essay number five, uh, Skype for business, I'm beaming in, I'm sorry, I got about one minute. Um, a lot of fun, they talked, they really enjoyed it. They had a really good, for they became fascinated with my office. And so they became so fascinated with my office that when they came to campus for events, they literally came to my office to visit. So I taught them face to face, we found a classroom, and they said, can we go see your office? And I went, well, I get, and they were like, oh, they're just like any student, they were like, well, we kept seeing the Bruce Springsteen poster, we wanted to come over, is that Springsteen? I was like, yes, you guys aren't listening to me talk about it. Piece of sentences at all, are you? You're looking at my toys in the back of my office, right? These are the guys who helped us out. This is a uh, uh, college consortium shares content with a university. Again, not, not, they're, they're kind of new. They're kind of new kids on the block, but we're in a partnership with them that allows us to offer courses, not only from Schreiner, but from other partners that we have. Um, these are the online classes along the way. And then finally, I said we had a very successful year. It turned out to be a lot of fun. Here we are, again, a lot of biology trips. We seem to eat a lot too. There was a, there was, there was a lot of, Dr. Woods, will you go down and visit your students? I said, absolutely. I said, take, take them out to lunch. Like, well, absolutely. They enjoyed Applebee's. These are our music kids. The final numbers that came out, 81% uh, of our students who were in this initiative this year will be coming to campus with us in the fall. So we're, we're delighted. And again, because of the blended learning, we were able to do that. I was going to say questions, but I'll wait on questions. I'll, I'll yield. I will gladly yield my time, and we'll do some questions afterwards. But I will say, this is my favorite picture from the event. I go down and do some recruiting. If you'll notice, here's Dr. Woods rambling on, as I often do, and you'll see my favorite student, Angel. Check. <laughs> How great is that? My wife said, oh, that just sums you up perfectly, doesn't it? I'm just going on, and the poor kid is like. And with that, I think I'll yield my time. Thank you all. I'll take questions afterwards.